What is up guys? We're back with another video and of course it is another graphics card launch. So today we're going to be taking a look at Nvidia's RTX 5060 Ti. We have the 16 gigabyte version here. Of course there's an 8 gig variant and a 16 gig variant. The big thing is that Nvidia actually priced these correctly, only being a $50 difference between the two cards. Now, the card that we have here today specifically is Asus's Prime OC Edition, which of course is factory overclocked, and we'll get into all of that. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now, first coming down to specifications, the RTX 5060 Ti is based on NVIDIA's GB206, offering 4,608 CUDA cores, 36 RT cores, 144 Tensor cores, 144 TMUs, and 48 ROPs. As I said, we have two different variants of the card, an 8GB model and a 16GB model. Both of these models will feature GDDR7 memory that runs across a 128-bit memory interface. The base clock of the card is set at 2,407 megahertz, while it will boost up to 2,572 megahertz. The ASUS card that we're taking a look at today is the OC edition. So on top of getting the 16 gigabytes of VRAM, you also have a nice factory overclock of 2,617 megahertz on the GPU boost. Now, when it comes to this card specifically, Asus's Prime OC card, this of course is part of their Prime series, which is a new series when it comes to their graphics cards, but Prime has been around seemingly forever when it comes to their motherboards, and it really represents their entry level. So in their graphics card product stack, this is gonna sit below their tough gaming series. Now, when it comes to design, this card is going to be all black with white accents. That means that it will match Asus's Prime motherboards. So if you got a Prime motherboard and a Prime graphics card, everything is going to match up quite well in your build. Now, when it comes to size, I'll go ahead and put the official dimensions of the card up on the screen like I always do. It is worth noting that this is a 2.5 slot card, so it does fit NVIDIA's SFF ready requirements. For the cooling solution on the card, you are gonna get a triple fan cooling solution that does feature Asus's Axial Tech fans. These fans are designed with blades connecting to an outer frame, which will spin with the fan itself. The two outer fans have the Prime logo on them, while the center fan has the Asus logo. Looking at the card from the side, we can see that the rest of the cooling solution is made up of two heat sinks, which are connected by multiple heat pipes. Under the hood, Asus is making use of their Max Connect technology. Max Connect is a special ASUS manufacturing process that effectively expands the surface area of the heat spreader that sits above the GPU by 5%. On the side of the card that will show if you have a glass panel, you will notice one very different thing compared to other RTX 50 cards is that we have a standard 8-pin PCI Express power connection instead of the 12VH PWR. Now this makes complete sense as the TDP of this card is 180 watts and a PCI Express connector can give you 150 watts plus the slot gives you 75 watts. Now moving down from the power connection we find a mode switch. By default it's set on performance mode but you can switch it to quiet mode if you want a more relaxed fan curve. Also on this side of the card you'll find a GeForce RTX logo and an Asus logo which both are white. If you're looking for some RGB, you're not going to find it on this card. There is, however, a large Prime logo that wraps around the edge of the card. Flipping the card over to the back, we have a full coverage metal backplate. The backplate itself is sort of split into two parts, with the part that covers the PCB having a brush finish, and then at the end we have sort of a frame. The end, of course, has openings for pass-through cooling. As far as connections go, you have three DisplayPort 2.1b and a single HDMI 2.1b. The card is slotted for two slot, but like I said, this is technically a 2.5 slot card, so definitely keep that in mind. When it comes to testing, we of course are going to be testing this graphics card in our graphics card test bench. So here's a full rundown of our test system.
when it comes to RTX 50 series cards, we are going to get DLSS 4, which comes with multi-frame generation. So up on the screen here, this is how DLSS used to work on DLSS 3, where you would essentially render a frame and then generate one frame that was single frame generation. But now we have multi-frame generation. So essentially you render a frame and then you can generate up to three frames. This really allows you to exponentially increase your frame rate. So we did test this in 3D Mark, and it, as you can see with DLSS off at 4K, we only got 21.73 FPS, but we just do a single frame. So this would essentially be like DLSS 3. A single frame gets us 79.65 FPS. If we generate a second frame, we get up to 109.4 FPS. And then again, we do it again and we get, you know, we're generating three frames now and we get up to 133.83 FPS. So you can definitely take this card and run it at 4K using DLSS 4. Here you can see our results in Cyberpunk 2077 at 4K, getting over 200 FPS with multi-frame generation. Now, as we come to the end here, I have to say that I'm actually pleasantly surprised that this is a pretty good card overall. Now, first talking about performance, this is gonna be a very solid 1080p card. So in pure performance, you can easily push all of the latest titles over 100 FPS at 1080p. You can even push something like a 144 Hertz monitor with this, no problem. Moving up to 1440p, you're gonna easily get over 60 FPS, so things are definitely gonna be playable at 1440p. Now, if we do some comparisons to the previous generation, unfortunately, the RTX 4060 Ti that we have is only the eight gig model, but in our testing, looking at my results here, we saw that it was 23% faster at 1080p and 25% faster at 1440p. So I would say if we did have the 16 gig model, it would probably be at least 15%, maybe 20% in some circumstances. So you're getting a nice little performance boost over the previous generation. If we go up the product stack to the RTX 5070, we saw that this card is 15% slower at 1080p and about 21% slower at 1440p. Now, if you did wanna push this card into the 4K realm, you can definitely do that, but of course you're gonna to have to rely on something like DLSS 4. Like you've seen in all of our RTX 50 series reviews, DLSS 4 is incredibly powerful, especially when it comes to multi-frame generation. In our testing, we were able to run this card, Cyberpunk 2077, at over 200 FPS with DLSS 4 and multi-frame generation. So you can definitely do that with this card. Now down to this card specifically, this is Asus's Prime OC edition. And I really love that Asus has moved the Prime series over from their motherboards. So you kind of know what you're getting when it comes to an entry-level graphics card. And of course, if you buy a Prime motherboard, with a prime graphics card, everything is gonna match and color-wise and all that kind of stuff. But overall, this card has a really good cooling solution, triple fan cooling solution. It's not all that thick either at 2.5 slots. You have the full coverage metal backplate. And of course, this is the OC edition. So you do get that factory overclock, which is gonna get you a few more frames in your games. Now we don't know pricing of this card just yet. I would really hope that they don't have a high premium over the non-OC edition because essentially the same card, this one just has a factory overclock. We'll see how that plays out with Asus. And that's where I think the RTX 5060 Ti really shines is gonna be the price because if you guys don't remember, last generation, Nvidia also released an RTX 4060 Ti, eight gigabyte and a 4060 Ti, 16 gigabyte. The big thing was that 
they were priced $100 apart and the 16 gigabyte variant was just like why would you buy it it's $100 more expensive how do you justify $100 it, it even made AIBs not even want to sell it I mean that's how bad it actually was here we're only seeing a $50 price difference from the 8 gigabytes to the 16 gigabyte so the 8 gigabyte is 379 this is actually 419 so again only a $50 difference which isn't all that bad and on top of that these cards are actually launching for cheaper than the previous generation so the 4060 ti 16 gigabyte was 499 this is actually like i said 419 so we're 70 dollars cheaper for about probably 15 to 20 percent better performance dlss4 and everything that comes with that you really can't go wrong if you can get it at that price and i think that's the biggest question when it comes to graphics card launches this year is can you get it at msrp there are no founders editions so you can't get it directly from nvidia you're you have to rely on the aibs and again we don't have pricing of this card at all also we don't know if just like previous rtx 50 cards you know we see a first run of msrp cards and then they're gone and they're never available ever again so that's the big question i think that if you can get this card at 419 it's a solid buy either going to be solid for 1080p or 1440p but if we see higher than msrp pricing and then you get into the more expensive cards which makes it the same price as say like a 5070 it might not be worth it but at the end of the day if you can get this for 419 it is a solid buy overall so that's kind of where we leave this because we'll see when this card launches what's available how long msrp cards are available and everything like that that's kind of where we have to leave this video because we don't know how this is going to shake out with availability pricing even tariffs and everything like that but at 419 i think you're getting a good deal and it's really nice that nvidia did price this cheaper than the previous generation so that wraps it up here for the rtx 5060 ti 16 gigabyte now if you have any questions about this card or asus's prime card specifically go ahead and leave it in the comment section below and if you did enjoy this video i would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up we'll see you guys in the next video